Think of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other shore. The scribe approached and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel passage sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? It's a not exactly the same one we heard yesterday. Yesterday we heard from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, today is from the Gospel of Matthew. I uh, just wanted to start out today with a little bit of a Bible trivia question. So we're getting into the time in the lectionary where we're starting to hear from the Old Testament prophets, right? This is the really good stuff of the Old Testament, right? Unfortunately, uh, the lectionary skips over a lot of it. But the Bible trivia question for you today is... Almost all of the major Old Testament prophets, which we hear from in the Old Testament, almost all of them are preaching in the south of Israel, right? We know when the kingdom was divided, right? It basically had the 10 tribes in the north and the two tribes in the south. Almost all the Old Testament prophets we hear about are preaching in the south of the kingdom, except for two prophets. Anybody know who those two prophets are? One we're hearing from this week, right? the prophet Amos, and then also the prophet Hosea. Right? If you're trying to pay attention to lectionary as we read through these readings, sometimes it's helpful to know that context. It's also important for the rest of salvation history. For example, when Jesus speaks to Samaritans, right? oftentimes he will not quote the prophets who are preaching in the South because the Samaritans were not familiar with those prophets. So many times when he speaks to Samaritans, if he's referencing a prophet from the Old Testament, it's probably the prophet Amos or the prophet Hosea. Right? Like Jesus in particular, the prophet Hosea is a great background for when he speaks to the Samaritan woman at the well. Right? So we'll explain that a little bit more as we go through these readings. Today, rather than focusing on these prophets, this reading we heard from today, I wanted to speak about today's feast day. Today is the feast of St. Cyril of Alexandria. Right. How many St. Cyril of Alexandria fanatics are there with us here in the church today? Right. St. Cyril of Alexandria scholars, right? Probably not that many of us. But St. Cyril of Alexandria was a major player in one of the Christological uh, controversies. Right. So it's very significant when we study church history, there was a period in the 4th and 5th centuries in which there was great debate about who Jesus is and who Jesus was. And again, this is something that's very striking. A lot of people, when they say, you know, why do we need a church to teach us how we're supposed to believe? Why can't we just stick with the scriptures? People are often surprised when they learn church history and find out just how divided people were about something as basic about who Jesus was, right? In the fourth century, there was a major controversy called Arianism. And the majority of the bishops in the world, the bishops of the church, were actually wrong. They did not think that Jesus was fully God, right? It seems like something so basic to us, but the majority of, of church bishops were actually incorrect. Right? If you want to ever read a good book, St. John Henry Newman, right? the Arian controversy of the fourth century. St. John Henry Newman famously says, all of a sudden the church woke up and found itself Arian, heretical. Right? It's not always easy to figure out these things. Not everything that Jesus did and said is immediately comprehensible, right? It takes time to spell some of these things out. So scholars call this the Christological controversies. 
The first major controversy, as I already mentioned, was the heresy of Arianism. Right? Arius basically said he was trying to wrestle with the mystery of the incarnation. And so he said, surely it is not possible that God could be in two places at one time. Right? Or how can we say that God is one and yet at the same time multiple? Right? And so Arius tried to solve this dilemma by saying, well, Jesus must not be fully God. Rather, Jesus must be some sort of quasi-divine human creature. And he says that there was a time when Jesus was not, right? The second person of the Trinity, right? That was the first controversy. It's called Arianism, right? And in, in his defense, it is kind of mysterious, right? There's a reason why every Sunday when we say the creed, there, there's a reason why we bow our heads during the creed. You ever wonder about that? Why do we do that? It's to recognize the mystery of the incarnation that in some ways it is incomprehensible. We can say certain things about it. We can say certain things are correct or incorrect, but we will never fully grasp the mystery of the incarnation. It's truly incomprehensible, right? It's something that goes beyond our logical minds that we can understand, right? Now, Arianism is a heresy that continues on throughout the church. For example, this is one thing people don't realize about the spread of Islam. Besides the fact that Islam spread by the sword, one of the other reasons why it spread is because this heresy of Arianism never really totally went away in the church. And so when Muhammad and his army was going about preaching that Jesus was not truly God, right, they found sympathetic hearers amongst many of those people, Arian heretics, right? Now, so that controversy was settled in 325 at the Council of Nicaea, from which we get the Nicene Creed. The second major controversy that arose was in the 400s, and it was resolved at the Council of Ephesus, and it was on the question of whether or not you could call Mary truly the mother of God. This is where St. Cyril of Alexandria comes in. St. Cyril of Alexandria heard another bishop, Nestorius, preaching something that he thought was heretical. Nestorius was saying that we should not call Mary the mother of God, but rather only the mother of the humanity of Christ. And St. Cyril of Alexandria was very upset about this. He thought that if you can call Mary the mother of the humanity of Christ, you also must be able to call her the mother of God. Otherwise, it's like you're spitting Jesus up into two different beings or two different persons, right? This was all settled at the Council of Ephesus in which the church emphatically proclaimed that, yes, Mary truly is the mother of God. God, in the incarnation, assumed a human nature to himself, and when that human nature took root in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we can truly say that God became incarnate in her womb. We can truly say that Mary did not just give birth to the humanity of Jesus, but she truly gave birth to God. Likewise, in the life of Jesus, right? It's not that the divinity of Jesus healed people and the humanity of Jesus preached, but rather truly God himself healed, preached, died, suffered, all of these things that you can attribute to the humanity of Jesus, you can also attribute to the divinity of Jesus. Because Jesus is not two persons. He's not two beings. Right? Everything that can be said of him can be attributed to everything about him. Right? Now this might seem like something that seems, you know, why do we have to argue about all these different things? Does it really matter? It absolutely matters. Right? Because the only way that we can truly be saved is if both a God and man died for us and redeemed us. If Jesus was not truly divine, then his sacrifice would not have been capable of redeeming us. Likewise, if he was not fully human, his sacrifice would not have been capable of fully redeeming us. So all these things, even though they might seem abstract, right, they still matter. And if we have time, another different feast, we might hear more about some of these Christological controversies. This was a very hot debate in the 4th and 5th centuries of the church.